Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can create a reveal text title effect inside of DaVinci Resolve's Fusion Editor. So for this video I'm going to make the title effect separate from the video clip. So what we're actually going to do is drag a fusion composition above our clip in the timeline, and by making it a fusion composition we'll be able to edit and move it around as its own separate entity. So if you go to the effects library, you can find Fusion Composition in Effects and then Fusion Composition. So drag that above your video clip on the timeline. And you may also want to trim or expand the duration of your Fusion Composition to match the video clip a little bit better. Uh, basically stretch it to the duration you want the title to be. So next, with Fusion Composition selected, go over to the Fusion tab. You should see only one node inside of the node section at the bottom, which is going to be Media Out. So we're going to need to build our title pretty much from scratch. So start by clicking on Text 3D on the toolbar above nodes, and that will add a Text 3D node. Next, with the Text 3D node selected, click Merge, and we'll use this Merge node to combine it with the 3D shape we'll create later. And then a Renderer 3D node to take the 3D scene and render it to a 2D image, and then connect the Renderer 3D to the media out. And then that will include the rendered result in the video export. Okay, so next I'm going to drag the node section down so that the preview window is a little bit bigger. And we can go into the inspector for the text 3D node. So we're going to want to change the text there. We can make it tutorial or just put whatever you want there. You can do multiple lines if you want by hitting enter on your keyboard. To make it perfectly centered on the screen by default, I'm going to go down to where it says vertical anchor and click on the centering justification. So that will make half of the text appear above an invisible center line and half of it below it, uh, which is what we want here. Uh, next I'll also decrease the size a bit because it's quite large compared to the frame at the moment. And you may also want to change the font. So one that I like to use is called Baby Snowy. I find it pretty good for titles. Uh, but when we switch it to that, the title shrinks a little bit, so we might bump it up again. Um, just size it however big you want it to be. Okay, next you need to find the frame in this timeline where the title should be fully revealed and set a keyframe there. So for this clip, I will say frame 30, which should be about a second of runtime if you're doing standard 30 frames per second. And for that frame, we're going to want to go over to the Transform tab in the Inspector. So make sure Text 3D is selected and click on Transform. And then we are going to take the translation for Y or whatever direction we want to adjust the position on and set a keyframe. So with Y transform, we can go up and down and X, you can go left and right. So just choose the property you need for that and set a keyframe. You can also do both if you want diagonals, so that kind of thing. Next, we're going to want to set the starting position for our animation. So I'll go to frame zero and I'll control the position of the title text. Where should it be starting before it reveals onto the screen? So I will drop it down here. Um, to somewhere below the video frame. Now, of course, where it's actually going to reveal will be some line right about there in the middle of the screen. But how it's going to reveal there and not at the bottom of the screen is going to be by using a mask to block out the bottom sections so that nothing can show on the screen, even if it's technically there. So next, somewhere between Text 3D and Media Out, we're going to need to create a effect mask and connect that into one of the nodes. So we can do that on the 3D renderer here. If you hover over the little blue icon, usually a blue pen is going to be for effect masks. So if we right click and go to add tool, we can choose mask here and we can do a rectangle. So a rectangle shape will work great because all of the characters will reveal at exactly the same time if we're moving directly upwards in a vertical fashion. So we just need to position this mask as basically an area where the text cannot display. And you can click on the gizmos to drag it up and down. And you can also click on the box bounds to stretch how big this mask should be. And in this case, we're going to want it to block out everything below roughly the middle line. So my rectangle is going to be bigger than the width of the frame. So we can take this and connect it to Renderer 3D here. And now if we go on our timeline to somewhere like frame 15, uh, we can see here that that's where we're going to want it to be blocked out. So right now the mask is actually allowing anything in that area to show, but we want it to block instead. So all we need to do is click on the invert property inside of the inspector for that uh, masking rectangle. And when we do that, all of a sudden anything that's being rendered will not actually show due to the masking rectangle. And now if we go further in the timeline, when that text actually reaches the middle point, you can see it starts to reveal 
because the text has actually gone above that masking threshold. So next you should go to where the movement is complete and adjust the mask a little bit more. So I'm going to make sure that this mask does not actually block it out once it's stopped in place in the center of the screen. So all you need to do for that is just drag the bounds until it is fully seen. And you can kind of scrub through your frames and see how it's going to reveal onto the screen. Now I mentioned earlier that we want to put a line below the tutorial that is kind of going to be that reveal line where everything that goes above it will show and everything that will go below it is going to be hidden. Now because we're attaching the rectangular mask to the Renderer 3D, we're actually going to have a separate Renderer 3D and combine those after the rendering rather than before so that the mask doesn't affect the 3D shape of the line in any way. So we can actually take the Merge 3D node and cut that with Control X. And then after the Render 3D node, we're actually going to want to select Render 3D and then right click on the line in front of it, go to Add Tool, and then do Composite and Merge. We can also copy the Render 3D node with selecting it, Control C and Control V. Now note that I'm not including the rectangular mask in that. And then we can feed this second renderer into the merge node. Now note one more thing, on the merge node, the green line is the foreground, which is what is going to show in front. Because we're going to want the line to always cover the text, the renderer that you have attached to the shape 3D should be the green line, and the renderer 3D that has the text should be the orange line for the background. So next we just need to click on add a 3D shape node, and then connect that into the renderer 3D. Uh, when you do that, you should see a square plane. Technically speaking, this is a 3D object. So if you hit the little preview icon to show the shape 3D on the left view, you can see that this actually exists in 3D space before it gets rendered. Since everything's facing the camera, we only really need a plane here. We don't need a cube or any other 3D shape. So we can just adjust the dimensions of the plane in order for it to look more like a line that goes right under the tutorial. So I'm gonna go over to the transform tab for this and we'll adjust the scale, but we're going to unlock X, Y, and Z so that we can control uh, the dimensions of each side individually. And so I'm going to take the Y scale and shrink that until it looks a lot more like a line. And we can also take the Z scale and stretch that until it's wide enough that it goes beyond the bounds of our text. Then we can use the translation gizmos on the preview window or the properties in the inspector to adjust its position. So I'm just going to move it down using the gizmo a little bit. And uh, we'll probably shrink the line a little bit more in its Y scale because it's pretty big right now. So I'm going to just click on the property and shrink that until it is as big as we want it to be. Adjust the position a little bit more. And then we're pretty much good to go. Back to that thing with the merge where I was talking about the foreground and the background. If I was to change the color of the line going over to the material tab um, to something like red and I go back into the earlier frames inside of the timeline, you'll see that if the mask wasn't there, um, so we can just hide the mask by disconnecting it, uh, you can see that the line would show in front. So you can see how the ordering matters with the merge node. So I'm going to add the merge back in. In this case, the mask is already technically above the bounds of the line. So the line isn't actually ever going to cover it because it never gets rendered in the first place. So right now that doesn't matter yet. But as you can see, the positioning of the mask is right above the line. I think what we're actually going to want is for the text to reveal as it gets above that line. So we're going to need to adjust the mask a little bit more. So with rectangle selected, adjust the gizmos until it is right in the middle of the line. And also double check your properties on the inspector for that rectangle. You can see here I accidentally set a little bit of an of a angle. I don't actually want that rotated. I want it to be a perfect rectangle. So I'm going to manually set that to zero again. And then the line should be um, perfectly across. That's what you want. So as long as this top mask line is below the top of the plane, your text will reveal as it gets above that line. So if we play this back from the start, this is what it's going to look like right now. It reveals as soon as it gets on top of the line, but any time that it is below the line in that mask area, it's completely invisible, even though it is technically there in terms of screen positioning. So now if I go to a later frame, like 120, and I want to reverse that effect, it's pretty simple. We would just click on the text 3D, keyframe the position at the frame we want to start moving it again, go to the end frame or wherever you want the animation to stop. We could just say frame 145 out of 147 there. And then uh, drag it back below the line. 
Now, you don't have to go further than where you can't see it, but the further you drop the position below the screen, the faster it's going to actually play that animation. Alternatively, you could have the keyframes occur over less frames, and that would also speed up the animation. Likewise, you can spread your keyframes further apart if you want it to be slowed down. So without too many steps, this is the effect you're going to get, being able to have text reveal after it goes above or below a certain masked line inside of your fusion composition. So I've been Chris, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this title tutorial inside of the fusion page for DaVinci Resolve, and I will see you guys in my future video content.